Synopsis of the Books of the Bible Minor Prophets By J. N. Darby Zechariah Chapters 7-10 Responsibility and Blessing, Israel's Past and Future The prophecy, from Zechariah 7 to the end of the book, has for its special object the introduction of the Messiah in Israel, with the consequences of his rejection. The same principles of responsibility and blessing, which we have already seen established with respect to the remnant on their return from Babylon, are found again here. The prophecy begins by calling to mind the insincerity of their lamentations and humiliation during the seventy years' captivity, and the example set them by the hardness of the people's heart, before that sorrowful period, which led to their dispersion among all the nations, the pleasant land being made desolate. But now Jehovah's love for Zion, his chosen city, excited his jealousy and his wrath against those who oppressed her. He was returned unto Zion, and she should be blessed as a city of truth, and the mountain of Jehovah should be his holy mountain. Jerusalem should be abundantly blessed, her streets full of inhabitants, and her old men full of days. God would bring back his people from all the countries in which they had been scattered and captive. From the day in which his people had turned to him and laid the foundation of the temple, the blessing should flow like a river, even as misery and judgment had done before. The Jews who had returned from Babylon were placed under conditions of truth and uprightness for the enjoyment of these blessings, verses 16 and 17. Besides this, Jehovah declares, unconditionally, that their fast days should be joyful feasts, and that men should come from all nations to worship Jehovah at Jerusalem, and should take hold of the skirts of a Jew, knowing that God was with that people. Here are, then, the moral consequences of disobedience, already accomplished, insincerity and hardness of heart pointed out, present blessing introduced by grace, and bestowed on the people under the condition of a godly walk, such fullness of blessing as the presence of Jehovah in their midst would involve, and, finally, the purposes of God in grace, which, depending on himself, should be never failing. God's Purposes of Grace and the Consequences but this last thought introduces many consequences and important events. The first two consequences are, that Israel should be put in possession of the whole territory which God had given them. Enemies from without would come, but Jehovah himself would defend his house, and the result of this direct intervention would be, that no oppressor should pass through them any more. Jehovah himself had already looked into this matter. It was a day in which the eyes of all mankind should be turned towards Jehovah as well as those of the tribes of Israel. Compare this part of Zechariah 9 with Isaiah 17. The introduction of Messiah in a twofold aspect. Now this immediate intervention of Jehovah, who encamps about his house, it is the defense of the city against the last attack of the Assyrians, which we have found more than once in the prophets, necessarily introduces the Messiah, in view of the events of the last days. Verse 9 speaks of this. It presents the Messiah in his personal character as King Messiah, but in a twofold aspect. And this is the reason why, in the New Testament, that portion only is quoted which relates to Jehovah's first coming. The King of Zion comes unto her. He is just and brings in himself power and salvation. This is a general idea, that which Zion needed, and which shall be accomplished in the last days. The Holy Ghost adds to this the personal character of the Lord, the spirit in which he presented himself to Israel, lowly and riding upon an ass. We all know the fulfillment of this at his first coming. The Effect of Messiah's Presence The Messiah himself having been thus presented, the definitive effect of his presence is announced in that which follows, as the continuation of verse 8, remembering who has been introduced. He will put an end to war in Israel, will establish peace among the nations, and his dominion shall be unto the ends of the earth, the land of Israel being the center of his power. Jehovah, having delivered the people, that is, the believing remnant, who shall become the nation, by the blood of the covenant, will restore them double for all their affliction, and use them to establish his power over the isles of the Gentiles. The might of Jehovah should accompany and save them, as the flock of his people. He would pour out blessing upon the land at the prayer of the remnant of his people, who had been wandering like a flock without a shepherd and had sought help in vain from their idols. But Jehovah had now visited his flock, the house of Judah, and out of them, strength should go forth. Judah should be as his goodly horse in the battle. He would strengthen Judah and save Ephraim. 
Jehovah would gather them in such numbers that there would be no place for them. He would dry up the sea and the river to make a way for them, and the pride of their enemies should be brought down. They should be strong in Jehovah their God and walk up and down in his name. To the end of Zechariah 10 it is the general proclamation of the blessing that should crown Judah and Ephraim, when, by the favor of Jehovah, they were restored to their land.